There are so many ways to produce drums these days, and you can go as stripped back and basic as you want, or as in-depth and over the top as you want, and still get great results. One thing to keep in mind when doing any recording that involves a full band setup, like drums, guitars, bass, vocals, whatever, is it doesn't matter how good your bass, guitar, vocal, keyboard, whatever sound is, if your drums don't sound that great. The reason for that is that your drums kind of overtake every single frequency. You have highs, mids, and lows all coming from your drum kit. So you want that to be great and consistent throughout your record. Now, recording kick drum is kind of a tricky thing. Some people have a hard time getting a good tone with their kick drum. It's either really muffled sounding, or maybe there's too much, too much low and not enough emphasis in the high, or vice versa, and it just sounds kind of flat. I've used this mic on its own as a kick drum mic, and then kind of worked with it in the mix. But I find it actually works best if you're using it in conjunction with another microphone. And that mic is actually the Shure Beta 91, which is this little guy right here. You wouldn't think you would use it for a kick drum because what it actually is, is a boundary mic. A boundary mic is something that you would put on onto the walls of a studio to capture kind of more the ambience of the instrument. So like a grand piano, you, you'd see a lot of people using something like this for grand piano or choir, or even if it was like a live off the floor jam and you just wanted to get the whole sound. Or hell, even if you're recording a drum kit and you want a room mic, throw these up on the on the, on the the walls. The theory is, is that a, a kick drum, any drum really, is, is a room, right? It's a hollow thing with walls. So this is technically still being put onto the wall if you throw it inside the kick drum. It's just going onto the wall of the kick drum. I find with this mic, you get a decent amount of highs and mids, and you still get a bit of lows, but it's very good at getting the attack of the drum, and that's why I say it's good to blend it in with something. Use like an Electro Voice RE20 to get more mids, a D112 to get some lows, or some sort of sub kick in order to get all of your lows. But if you mix it right, you'd use this for pretty much all the attack and the highs and the mids of your kick drum. A very common microphone technique when working with drums these days, especially in metal, is to just make sure that you get all of the transients clearly, so that way you can replace the drums later on with samples. Now, I wasn't a really big fan of that idea when working on this record, so I wanted to get a lot of natural tones. I thought using this guy with that intention was going to yield some very good results. I believe we had around 15 microphones on a five-piece kit, which is admittedly pretty insane. We had about three microphones on the kick drum, but most of our tone actually comes from the Beta 91. Everything else was just to kind of fill in a little bit more low end or maybe a little bit more of a roomy sound so that way we weren't just getting a harsh click attack. What you are ensuring by putting the Beta 91 inside of a kick drum is that you get a lot of attack from the beaters, but you still get resonance from inside the drum. It does a decent job of isolating your kick drum without much bleed usually, and when you blend it in with other microphones, you get like really cool tones. This mic goes for about 325 bucks Canadian at Long & McQuaid, so it's not a cheap microphone. I would highly recommend it though, and if it's going to be the most expensive mic on your kit, then I still think it's worth it. Even if you're thinking of sample replacing your drums, that mic still does a very good job because it captures the transient really well, so you won't really have any problems replacing it. That's all I've got to say on the Shure Beta 91. Hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to stay in the loop whenever we drop another video. This is Lucas signing off.